Back here on the North Shore Drive podcast, Chris Carter, Brian Batko. Brian, you look at the Steelers roster right now, and a point that you made recently for us, I forget you did this on your mailbag or in an art. I think it was a whole article that you wrote, is that the Steelers don't have many late round picks on their roster right now that are that have stood out for that stood out and helped the roster like teams like the Niners and the Chiefs had. Uh, in fact, that was an article that's because that was that's where I was getting that 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 that, that point from there. Uh, but that's something where the Steelers haven't had as many hits on late. You can look at Jalen Warren, sure. He's an undrafted guy that's worked out as an RB2, but you know, the, the Chiefs have a starting running back in Isaiah Pacheco, who was a seventh rounder. Uh, the Niners starting quarterback is the seventh rounder, and not just those guys, but there's guys across several different positions. But the Steelers do have some of those guys on their roster right now. Seventh rounder Corey Trice, a guy they traded, <laughs> they got they got in they got in the middle of this year, who was a fourth round pick in Darius Rush. Um, there's plenty of options that they've had at you know on, on their roster who are some of those guys that you're looking at that could make a legitimate step up this year in training camp and maybe fill some of those holes that they need to fill in this offseason yeah i mean it's it's really all about guys who can become role players right because you're not going to have big contracts for studs at every single position you're, you're not going to be able to address every spot on your roster in the draft and all of that comes even before it, the injury bug starts to take its toll so i i do think the steelers on the margins have done a sneakily good job building up some depth for from some forgotten guys like you just mentioned who we don't normally talk about you know trice i don't know if he'll ever be the same after yet another injury but i know he's been working and, and rehabbing and trying to get on the road to recovery if, if there's one upside to it it's that it happened in training camp out of the trove so you'd hope that he'll be ready to roll um by next camp if not otas in in mini camp in June. So I, I still want to see what that six foot three, 200 something corner can do opposite Joey Porter Jr. I thought he looked pretty good before he went down uh, at St. Vincent College. Rush, another one. He had some lapses at times in the games, but you like the overall makeup and, and physical profile. I, I think if you draft a corner this year in the you know fourth, fifth, sixth round, it's going to be somebody like a Darius Rush in terms of the pedigree uh, and the size and speed and all that. Sticking with the secondary, you know, Trenton Thompson, he, he sort of faded away at the end of last season, especially once Minka Fitzpatrick came back. He had a stinger. He had some sort of issue with his neck. But, you know, he helped change the you know momentum of the season at one point in Cincinnati with that big interception that he had. So, I mean, that was a proof positive that, that he can make some plays. And I think he'd be exactly the type of safety – to sort of put next to Minka Fitzpatrick and he's a little bit bigger bodied guy can play in the box, but he showed the playmaking ability there against the Bengals. And then I look at receivers as well, Chris, they've been adding some guys throughout the years on practice squad and futures deals. Denzel Mims was a second round yeah. pick of the jets in 2020. He, he really got squeezed out there. I don't know if he didn't live up to expect. I mean, he obviously didn't live, up to expectations, but he was somebody in that draft class. I remember who was sort of right there in the chase Claypool, Brandon, Ayuk, uh, LaVisca Chenault, second tier of receivers, you know, really liked him coming out of college and he just faded into oblivion and the Steelers scooped him up at one point for the practice squad and stashed him. So does, does he have anything left uh, in his NFL career to be rejuvenated? Des Fitzpatrick's another one who was with them mm -hmm. all last training camp. I think he, Kind of made a late push to to try to make the roster. Obviously, that didn't happen. But I know the coaches like him and, and like the way he worked on the scout team and stuff with the practice squad. He's not just some scrub who's you know incapable of helping at the NFL level. The Titans used a fourth round pick on him out of Louisville a couple of years ago. So these are names that you just kind of keep in the back of your mind as you're thinking, oh, the Steelers they need to draft a receiver in the fourth round or higher. They need to draft a corner this year. It's like. Eh, sometimes you get these guys on futures deals who are sort of like an extra draft pick as you use this extra time to evaluate them and see if they can ultimately become contributors. Robert Spillane was a player mm -hmm. like that in recent years who worked out for the Steelers, as was Matt Filer on the offensive line. Right. And the Steelers need to find answers like that because that's how you fill things in. I mean, you Every look team at does. It helps. That helps a lot when you get gems like that. 
Right, because then you don't have to keep spending it so many different positions o- over the years. And, and, you know, we've talked about this in the offensive line a lot. Like you look back at the 2010s offensive line, the two pillars of that line were first round pick Pouncey and first round pick DeCastro. But uh, Ramon Foster, undrafted, Villanueva, undrafted, uh, Kelvin Beach of seventh round pick. Uh, you know, Filer, you know, Andrea, you like you get all those guys that you that filled on that line because you had these stars around them. And maybe that's to your point about the cornerback position. You don't maybe you don't need another first or even second round pick to address that spot. If Joy Porter Jr. is that guy, uh, you know, it, and, and having those guys there. And sometimes it helps to double down, you know. Uh, Alex Highsmith, the third round picks playing next to, you know, uh, Alex or playing next to TJ Watton. I wouldn't say Highsmith's a role player. He's kind of developed into a good, a really good player for the Steelers. Uh, but, you know, there, there's, you need to have places on your roster that you didn't invest a lot into to have a complete roster in today's NFL. There's too much parity. There's too much, you know, with the draft, with free agency, there's, there's too many ways for other teams to amass those talents as well. Um, you need to find, you need to find your, your, uh, um, you know, your, your hard to find players there. So I, I think that you find you, yourself chasing aging vets like Patrick Peterson. Exactly. In free agency and, you know, trying to, to build that way. So if, if the Steelers can kind of get back to uh, unearthing some players who, Maybe were left for dead by other teams, or you know, didn't make the team out of camp in a in a previous uh, summer or preseason. But you know, somebody they want to continue to develop and and do business with, as Mike Tomlin always puts it, development is just as much a part of the uh, you know the, the team building process as player acquisition is. Absolutely. He's Brian Batko. I'm Chris Carter. We've been talking all things Steelers. We'll be back Monday uh, getting you ready for the combine as as we send our team out there to Indianapolis. I'll be with us there covering the combine. Omar Khan set to speak uh, Monday afternoon slash early evening. We'll have all that here on for the pit for on the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, uh, post gazette.com for all our written work. Uh, that good. Check out our podcast. Check out your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Check out the North Shore Drive podcast as well as all of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette podcasts that we do here. Um, Everyone have a great weekend. Adam Bittner will be with you Saturday talking a little bit more pre-draft stuff as well, but stay tuned for all the great content from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all the sports coverage from the Post-Gazette that we have to offer, visit post-gazette.com.